Right, I think we'll get going. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today. Uh, it's with pleasure that I introduce um, Lee, who is uh, going to, who, who I'll uh, introduce in a minute. Uh, just uh, for, for me, I'm um, Via, I'm a senior international consultant at GL Education. Uh, so I work with schools primarily in Africa, but also across the world. Uh, and I'm a, a former teacher by background, a maths teacher. Um, and Lee, it's uh, with, with pleasure to introduce you to, to the audience today. Um, so Lee is a senior leader at the Brayburn Group of Schools. Uh, and um, she is, uh, her experience includes an in-depth knowledge of both UK and international curricula um, and education policy and implementation of those curricula, uh, development of them as well, and uh, supporting use of those assessments to support high performance within students. Lee has an extensive experience of designing, implementing and driving pupil tracking and monitoring systems, ensuring high levels of pupil attainment and achievement uh, and progress. Uh, so um, we will talk about a lot in a lot more detail about all of those things in a moment. Uh, Brayburn is an international educational group, uh, operates in Tanzania and Kenya uh, across 16 primary and secondary schools. Um, the group offers British and international curricula. So, um, Lee, I think we'll get straight into the, the conversation. Um, so my first question for you is, uh, which GL assessments do you use and, and what purpose do they hold for, for Brayburn? OK, morning, everybody. Um, which assessments do we use? Well, over time now, all of them. Um, we started with just looking at the, the CAP4 assessments. We needed a really robust baseline and a baseline that didn't pigeonhole the children into a fixed box. Um, we wanted something that took into account neuroplasticity and cognitive development over time, coupled with good teaching and learning. So we started with the GL CAP4 assessments. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that actually we need something to replace the, the SATs. You know, when, when SATs went on many... Um, levels that, that was considered a good thing. You know, schools had a little bit more freedom in terms of how to monitor, track and assess at Key Stage 3. But we noticed that it actually left a bit of a hole. And so we we went to you, yourselves again and we, we looked at the progress in, in English, maths and science and that's filled the gap quite nicely. Mm. And then we went, well, hang on, we're looking at the academic side what about the other side? Right. You know, what What else do we need to take into consideration? You know, I, I was fortunate to be a, in a conference with Matthew Savage a mm. little while ago, mm. and he talks about his his Mona Lisa effect, the, this idea that, you know, when you, you go into the Louvre, Mona Lisa just stares right at you. And he says, and I fully support him, that that's how children should feel. And you know, if, if we're going to do that, then we can't just look at the academic side. We also have to look at, you know, how they feel about themselves as learners, how they feel about the school. So has ticked that box really, really nicely for us. And so, you know, the, the last bit of the puzzle really is the, the national reading tests, the NGRT. Now, we're, we're late adopters for, for this, I'll, I'll be honest. Um, but it's now giving us a complete suite of GL assessments that are helping to drive forward what we, you know, we consider data driven schools. Now, mm. caveat on that, because as soon as I say, oh, we're moving towards being totally data driven, everyone goes, Woo! you know, does it, you know, is the only thing that matters to you is, is the numbers, the data. No, absolutely not. But what we're, we're moving towards with your help is a system where we, we are looking at each individual child and from, from you know, our own internal uh, assessments as well, we're getting a really, really good picture of exactly what we need to do to support our children. Brilliant, thank you. Thanks, that really nice uh, summary there. Uh, I forgot to say at the start, everyone as well, if you've got any questions for Lee, then please feel free to put them in the Q&A box. Uh, we won't be on monitoring the chat, uh, but we will be looking at the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your screen uh, next to the chat button. So feel free to put any questions in there, which we'll come to at the end. Uh, so yeah, that's back to Lee. Thank you for that. Uh, so I guess my next question is, um, so you've got you've got a, a suite of assessments which give you essentially a whole view of the pupil, um, a 360 view of, of looking at all different aspects of their development. Uh, why did you decide to switch to GL in the first place? Because I, I know that you used uh, some CEM assessments um, initially. 
Okay. If anybody's from CEM here and, and listening to this, please don't sue me for what I'm about to say. Um, we felt that there were two issues with, with going down the, the, chem, the chem route. One, you have to really understand exactly what they're doing to be able to interpret the information that they give you. For your average teacher who really just wants to know, what do I need to do to support this child and to move this child from where they are now to where they need to be? It was too complicated. Mm. You know, it, it, when we were delivering training on it, you could see people's eyes just glazing over. The other issue for me, uh, I alluded to it right at the beginning, is it puts a child in a box, you know? It says, okay, this is what you are. Now, we don't believe in that in Braben at all. You know, we, we believe that, that there is no such thing as fixed potential, that children are constantly developing and through good teaching and learning, they are cognitively developing as, as they go on. So we love the fact that CAT4 takes that into consideration. And we love the fact that, you know, it's not a, oh, we'll test them there and their job done that, you know, those indicative grades are good for, for the rest of their academic career. You know, you expect the numbers to change. You expect the children to, to you know, to get stronger, especially, you know, when, when we started looking at the verbal spatial profiles and, ha and how we can build that into our teaching and learning. We've seen massive improvements in terms of children's verbal um, skills and their, and their spatial skills. So in, in essence, for, for me, Chem was brilliant when it started. You know, it really did tick the box in terms of getting everybody thinking about baseline data, thinking about, you know, indicative grades and thinking about the journey of, of getting from one to the other. Right. But it stopped. Mm. It doesn't do enough now and not for, for the children that we're seeing in the international schools. Mm. Mm. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> no, thank you for that really comprehensive answer. And I guess that, that links to my next question, which is sort of around the journey that you just mentioned. So obviously, uh, CAT4 sets the baseline for, for you and your students. Um, how did you how did you go about implementing uh, CAT4 and our other assessments and what kind of journey did you go on to, to really embed them uh, both with your students and your and your teaching staff? It, it's as you know, it's been a long journey. You know, mm. we, we started this in 2016. Um, we started just by introducing the CAT4, showing the staff what it was, showing the staff what the benefits were. Um, then showing them how, how to set up the assessments, how to, you know, administer them, and then how to interpret the information that, that they got back. Now, initially, we, we kept this at a really simple level. Hmm. It was just, okay, these are how, you know, you most likely achieve grades. These are your if challenge grades. Right. These are the children's standardized age scores. Hmm. This is what not that an average child exists, but this is what broadly average would look like. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we taught them about, you know, look for 10 point differences. Also look at the number of questions that have been answered before you make judgments. Right. Yeah. Then we started to work with the, the personalized learning departments about, okay, what is this information telling you about this child? Then we started training them about how to use the quadrants. So identifying your verbal and mathematical deficits by looking at the difference between the verbal and the nonverbal mm. or the quantitative and the spatial, you know, looking at where the children fit and what that means in terms of, of teaching and learning. Mm. So that, that was basically what we, the journey we went on with, with the CAP4. Then we started to introduce the verbal spatial profiles. Mm. How does that fit into the picture? What does that tell you about the, the learning needs that the children have? Right. How does that fit into everything that, that we've done before and seen before? And then the pandemic hit. And we suddenly found the value of one of your assessments that perhaps we'd, we'd not really seen the value of before. And that's the pass. Mm. You know, to be, to be honest, we, as you know, we've, we've run the past for years, right. but it's always been something like, oh, look, we're all green. Great. Move on. You know, you might pick out the odd kid that has a few little, little issues, but on the whole, 
it was just something that we did in isolation, box ticked, move on. Mm. Mm. But then we started working with you guys about, well, what can the past tell us that in addition to the normal reports? Mm. So you know the way that we all now combine the, the CAT4 data? Yes. So we look at different um, aspects of the CAT4 data to give us a, a, a 360 picture. Mm. We started to do the same with the pass. So we started to combine some of the nine measures. Mm. So, okay, well, overall, how does this child feel about themselves? Right. Yeah, you know, we're, not, we're not face-to-face uh, you know, at various points with this mm. child, we're supporting mm. this child remotely. How how is that working? What mm. what does the past data tell us about that? So that was really interesting because kids that were green suddenly weren't green. Were not so green. We started right. to apply, you know, to combine some of these measures. So we started working with the staff on, okay, what do you do with this information now? Mm. We've, you know, you've you've done your analysis. And you found out the cat really might be presenting on screen or in the classroom as bubbly and confident and everything else. But underneath, you peel that mask back and, right. you know, these are the reasons. These are the hidden barriers to her learning that mm. are causing these grades and the, the frustration where you're saying, well, cat four says they should be getting an A grade. Why is she getting D's? Yes. Well, yeah. because of this. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it that was really, really powerful for, for our staff where mm. suddenly you you saw them go, oh, wow. If we combine the data, if we just, we, we've, we now know what we're dealing with. If we know what we're dealing with, we can fix it. We can help. We can support. Mm. So that, that's been really, really powerful. Yeah. So, brilliant. you know, it's taken us from 2016 to now to get to that point mm. but i think the fact that we we didn't drip feed but we we gave the schools what they needed at the right time right showed them how it built on what they'd done before mm. showed mm. them then how to use it in the classroom because you know the biggest criticism i think that offset and cis and COVID all have when they come into schools and schools present their data, isn't that, well, you've got the data and you're tracking the data. It's, well, what are you actually doing? Well, how are you using it? it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. is it, How is this making an impact on that child? Right. And the way we structured the gradual introduction of the GL and the, the training that we put in so that the staff could say, well, you do this mm. and this is how you, you make a difference in the classroom as a result of this. I think uh, has really helped us. Yes, no, that, that's that's really powerful. I think you're absolutely right. So you, you can collect all the data in the world, but if you're not using it, then then what's the point? Um, yeah. So I, I guess that kind of leads to my uh, next sub question. Um, you, you mentioned that you were so you had students who had a particular cat four grade a score, um, and then but they were not performing in the classroom, and you found out through past that there were some difficulties that that they were facing. Do you have any specific examples of of how how that manifested itself in the classroom and what the impact of any interventions were. Um, if you do, well, I've, if, I've, yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've got two. Yeah. Um, one, one is a little historical. Um, there was a, a young man um, come up through year eleven, so he was known well to to the to the staff. And if you'd have asked the staff to describe him, they just said um, maybe a bit cocky bit arrogant you know he thinks he knows it all you know he'd had a few shall we say challenging conversations with stuff but nothing nothing that would send off red flags Mm. at all Mm. not a thing right and then we did pass and it was the first time that actually we I as an academic leader had sat down with pass data and the red Mm. flags went up straight away because for every measure to do with how that child felt about himself, right. he was red. We didn't even need to combine anything <laughs> at that point. It was in your yes. face, we have a problem. Now, we'd have never known. We'd mm. have never known. We'd have just gone along going, yeah, well, you know, he obviously doesn't revise because he thinks he knows it all. You know, he's obviously mm. not putting the effort in class because he th- you know, mm. he thinks he, he can do it. 
wasn't that at all. This child had such low self-esteem. Right. Didn't think he had any value. Thought school was wonderful. Thought his teachers were wonderful. Just couldn't see how he fitted into it. Right, right. So we got him some help. Yes. And he got straight A's at mm. A-level. Wow. Off first choice university. Perfectly yeah. happy. Yes. Yeah, a more recent one, uh, as I say, when I alluded to the pandemic, you know, mm, we, mm. we had children who we thought should be able to cope with remote teaching and learning with no problem. They mm. coped in the classroom with no problem. Mm. You know, they, were, they mm. were still having contact with their teacher, but we saw their scores gradually drop. Right. But when we, we did the pass with them again, we could see the reasons behind that. Things were yes. being peeled back. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, as as we peeled them back and go, ah, the isolation's not helping the, this this child or this child doesn't feel confident if they can't have that interaction. Mm. Trying to put more support in, gradually we did see the results coming back up. Mm. And, mm. you know, our results this year have been fantastic. Mm. Um, mm. But I do think it, it's down to how we're using the GL assessments to support yeah, the children. Yes, brilliant. Because I guess you can put in all the support that, that that you can, but unless it's the right support, it's not going to make any difference. And I think what you're saying here is that that past data enables you to see exactly what kind of support individuals needed. Um, that that student year twelve sounds like his. So it was it was very much internal factors rather than anything external, wasn't it? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah, you know, which is... we, we'd have never seen it. No. You know, uh, everybody banned these masks around because, you know, we're in a, the pandemic. But I think what we've also got to realise is that by the time students come into high school, those psychological and social masks, the mm. hidden ones, are so tight yes. that often the kids don't realise they're wearing them. No, And no. it's only by using, a, you know, various assessment tools that you, you can start to unpick that. I was just going to say, having been a bit about pass previously, <laughs> as you might be picking up, I'm a real convert. Mm, I, I think it's possibly the most powerful tool that teachers have alongside any academic assessment tool to really be able to identify what the, the children they, that they teach need. Mm. And I think where it's where it's most powerful, like you've alluded to, is when you combine the few different sources together, isn't it? Mm. Um, so I guess that sort of links to my next question, and I think you've you've touched upon this already. Yeah. But um, what have your greatest wins been, um, and what have you learned along the way as well? I guess in terms of things that you might have done differently, were you to go through the, the same process again? If I had my time over again, mm. I'd try and make sure that the pace was such that I brought all my schools along at, at the same point. Um, right. Although, you know, my, my boss would argue that we did it at the point at which the schools were ready for it. So, yes. you know, maybe, maybe both approaches would have worked. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, that, that's great. Thank you. Um, I, I just reminded to the audience, if you want to put some questions into the Q&A box, I think we've had one, which we'll get to at the end. But if there are any more, feel free to put them in the Q&A chat box. Um, the, my next question for you, Lee. Uh, so, again, I think we've alluded to this already, um, but more Broadly speaking, aside from past, I think how how have the how has the assessment data benefited your students? I, I think it, it comes back to that idea of each child being seen mm. and feeling that the staff know them and know what they need. So that's the first thing. The second thing is obviously we're we're constantly talking to the children about targets, not necessarily stating that you know your target is an A grade or anything like that, but talking about okay, these are the milestones that you you've achieved in terms of our curriculum. Right. Okay. So a key stage five, mm. based on um, our our analysis, we're adding almost four grade points oh, wow. of value to every single student mm. four grade points that's that's now, outstanding you, you know well yeah you know at, at GCSE it was uh, closer to 2.4 mm. but you know it, it across our group you know we're, we're we're a fairly large group really you know if you take the the big schools um or 
organizations out of the equation we're, we're not a, a small group mm. and for us to be able to to show that level of value added mm. means that we're doing it right at the individual child level yes we're getting it right for each and every single student mm. in our school and mm. that's what matters to us you know it, it's nice when we'll be able to say you know you know um 40 percent of our ib students got a diploma of 40 points plus you know mm. that's that's great to be able to publish. but it's more to be able to say well actually you know amar preet didn't think she could get it mm-hmm. but why working with her although it said she'd only get 24 points yeah she got 38 right you know yeah. and it yeah. and it's that, that yeah. that's Yeah. So, so how does the um how, how does the data that you collect along the way feed into that? Uh, so you've got obviously the baseline with Cat Four, and you've got that indicator that you just mentioned. Um, but what are the data points along the way? How do they feed into that success? Well, what we we ask the the schools to do is to track their their internal assessment data. Mm. Um, on a half-termly basis. Mm -hmm. So what they're constantly doing is looking at the child's performance against those um, indicative targets. And we use both, as you know. We use the most likely achieved as our minimum, but your aspirational is the the if challenged. Yes. And as a result of of the the tracking, then analysis is done every half term. Mm -hmm. You know, where are the children in relation to these indicative grades? What is it in the classroom that's, you know, causing the success or or needs development? We've done a lot of work with with our schools about how to effectively use their interim assessments, Mm -hmm. you know, to to actually not just look at, oh, well, you know, 70 percent of the class got an A star. Great. But actually to to strip those internal assessments down Mm. so they can identify the causes of, of success. Right. But they can also identify, you know, what is it that's causing a barrier mm. to all the children reaching their or exceeding their target grades. Mm. And then, what, mm. you know, they're, they're asked to think about, well, you know, what do you need to do? Do you need to intervene? Do you need mm. more differentiation? Do mm. you need to stop and reteach this mm. before mm. we move on? And so the data alongside the, the, the analysis then coupled with action yes. within the brain yes. and culture yeah. is what I think is driving us all forward. Brilliant, yeah, and it is It is that, I think going back to what you were saying before, it is that action, isn't it? That So obviously the data is very important to have, but it's the action that goes with it, which is the key. Um, and that really le- leads me to my final question um, for this morning. Uh, so what, what do you want to do next as a group uh, in terms of your development and how will GL assessments potentially support that development? Well, uh, I hope everybody's realised just how very proud I am to be part of the Braben Group. Mm. Um, we're, I think, a very unusual um, international group of schools in in Kenya for, for a number of reasons. Mm. Um, but one thing I think that we have in common with, with all the international schools is this passion to develop the skills and talents of every individual child. Mm, mm. So our next step, um, we we believe that we are, you know, um, country leaders in terms of sport right. and our sporting achievements. We believe that we're we're leading the way, especially with our our Arusha schools um, in performing art. Mm. What we want to do now, no matter what background they've come from as highly right across the academic suite. So we're, we firmly believe that every child can achieve. And so what our next step is, is to continue using GL assessments, continue using our, our practices and policies in terms of um, data-driven classrooms yeah. um, to continue to support the children right. and, and continue to achieve the phenomenal value added that, that we've managed to to um producing over the last few years mm. great that, thank you very much lee that's really really insightful all of all of your answers um 
hopefully that was useful for for everyone listening as well uh, we have got one question from the audience uh, and if every, anyone does have a question there is some time now to to put those into the chat so we're just going to have a look at this question so uh question from greg thank you for that um would it be possible to have the chronology that lee hill used to support the development of our school of your school to introduce the gr program um, so I actually, we do actually have a bit of a timeline, don't we, which I'm, which I can share on the screen, um, if you, mm -hmm. if you would want to go through that, Lee. Um, let me just attempt to share my screen. Yeah, hopefully, people can now see that. Lee, can you see that on your? Yes. Okay, brilliant. Yes, I can. So just make it a bit bigger. If you, if you want to briefly just take us through, kind of that that timeline. Okay, so as you can see, prior to 2016, we, we were firmly a chem data school, or the, we were just using prior attainment to set targets. You know, the, the, we weren't really doing it much with the data, to be honest, other than feeding it back in reports to parents or to head office. But then we started um, in 2016 to pilot the CAP4. And at the same time, we started to improve our policies and procedures and that tracking that I, I talked about with Veer a little while ago, we started to make that more formalized. Mm. Um, closer to the beginning of 2018, our academic deputy heads got together. So they were, were starting to, to drive forward this idea of a, a data-driven classroom, data-driven schools, and you know, to, to start training their, their teachers on, on the CAT and how to use it. So by August of that year, CAT was in all of the secondary schools mm -hmm. and most of our primary schools and was being used as, as we've talked earlier about mm -hmm. how to drive school improvement. Right. Um, at the same time, we then, as we've been going through um, an inspection process, mm -hmm. uh, ISI and CIS, and you know, they'd, they'd highlighted um, something that we, we'd already spotted ourselves, to be honest, that mm. with the absence of SATs at Key Stage 3, mm. we had a gap. Uh, we had right. all this rigorous and robust tracking and monitoring at Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5. And, you know, the, the primary school tracking was fan fantastic, but we, we had a gap in, in Key Stage 3, which was why we, we approached you and you said, OK, yeah. we'll trial the, the progress test. So we, we started trialing those uh, across the group mm -hmm. and now all of our schools have adopted it because it, it is the best way to enable um, us to accurately identify the progress that the children are making uh, at key stage three. Mm. Um, we've, we then took on more of a group role in terms of, of the data and the curriculum at the beginning mm -hmm. of, of last year. And you know, it was really at last year that we were were starting to to make more use of the group level analysis of our, our public examination data, right. and to show the schools how to use that information alongside their own school um, derived information to identify gaps and plan for for improvement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, our, we we've recently just revamped our school evaluate the change most recent changes in the offset framework mm -hmm. and all of the data that we we get from from gl assessment it's the the cap four we've built into that school mm. evaluation form as Brilliant. data collection points mm. which mm. then help the school to to drive the narrative thank you very much everyone for joining and a, a massive thank you to lee as well for for your time this morning uh that that was really really insightful um if if anyone does have any questions uh, that uh, that come come up later. Uh, feel free to email us at g, uh, international at gl education dot com, uh, and there will be a recording for this webinar as well, which will be shared um, once it's been uh, processed. Uh, so thank you again for joining this morning, and um, see you soon. <laughs>